right evening everybody it's definitely evening because it's dark outside and it is still thursday 28th of july so we shall do what is going to be the very last american whiskey of um the whole lot the whole challenge basically so um my laptop is knackered at the moment so i can't actually open my spreadsheet to see exactly how many u.s whiskies i've done but i think it's about 80 to 85 um, that I've done certainly in the last chunk it's been about 70 um, and I've done a few odds and sods before then like the Jim Beam um, small batch collection and things like that earlier on in the challenge so I'm reckoning about 80 85 American whiskies will have been covered off um, which is not bad going at all to be honest and that's actually kind of a drop in the ocean compared to how many American whiskies there are out there um, there's just so many so many interesting things as well that I I probably could have done a dram a day just on American whiskies. I would have, it would have been a bit of a struggle to do 366 unique brands, um, but it would have been an interesting go if it wasn't for the fact that I'm in the UK, it might be worth a shout, but um, as it is, 80 odd, 85 is still um, still way more than I've ever had before, and I count myself as a bourbon fan, so um, yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, also, want to give a shout out, I've been talking about the British Bourbon Society on Facebook, um, the Bourbon Lovers, um, there's actually a UK chapter now, so there's a Bourbon Lovers United Kingdom uh, on Facebook, um, and the Whiskey Bourbon um, whiskey bourbon and Scotch Enthusiasts, or, or one of the other groups, they're on the end credits as well. Um, but if you listen to podcasts, which I do and actually led me to doing this challenge, um, and you like American whiskey in particular, whiskey generally, but American whiskey in particular, it's well worth get, um, listening. Well, whiskey cast obviously because it's the the main whiskey based um, podcast that uh, comes out every week. Mark Gillespie, um, but it's also worth checking out um, the weekly whiskey. Uh, which is um, three guys, um, I think they're American, not Canadian. I can, I can never tell the difference between Canadians and Americans. They're all so similar. Just like they think we all have the same accent and we clearly don't. Um, but it's uh, three guys that do, uh, they seem to have taken a bit of hiatus in the last month, but um, basically every, as it says, weekly whiskey, every, every week they talk about um, a different whiskey. Um, and it's also well worth checking out um, a podcast called The Whiskey Topic. Um, now this is um, uh, two people, um, Jamie Johnson, who um, goes under the moniker of Bourbon Thing on Twitter. Um, I don't know, I don't know what she, who she works for, but she does a lot of kind of tastings and stuff as well, because I follow her on Twitter, and a guy called Mark Bylock. Um, and the two of them do a weekly podcast, which is absolutely fantastic. They're enthusiastic as hell. They clearly get on like a house on fire. Um, I don't think they're a couple, but they certainly act like they are. And yeah, it's well worth listening. So if you've got time in the car, if you're out walking a dog like I do, and um, you, you fancy listening to some some good, interesting, you know, whiskey podcast, then whiskey cask, weekly whiskey, and definitely whiskey topic. Well worth checking them out. Right. So wanted to get them in before I finish off the American whiskies. Um, so this particular one, the last one, probably apt that I have this one to finish off with. This was another one from Jason Stover. Um, thank you, Jason, for this one, um, which is Heaven Hill Old Style Bourbon. So this is what the bottle looks like. And this is Heaven Hill's flagship brand, essentially. This is like their bog standard or bog standard one. You're looking at $10 a bottle for this. Um, the Whiskey Exchange asked, um, do actually sell this for 21 quid. Um, I did find it somewhere else in the UK for 19.99. Um, which is a pretty much a fair price for entry level branded bourbon. There are bourbons available in UK supermarkets. I think Old Samuel's one that's about 15 quid. But if you want an actual name, you're looking at 20 pound upwards. So um, you can get this in the UK, but it's obviously nowhere near as cheap as in America. Um, so Heaven Hill um, was actually founded just after Prohibition um, in 1935 by a group of investors, which included a guy called Joseph L. Beam, who was Jim Beam's first cousin. Now, um, the, the headquarters of Heaven Hill and the original distillery is in Barston, um, which is here. Um, and not as, as the company kind of got rolling, um, the investors included a couple of people um, from a family called the Shapira family. 
and the Shapira family ended up buying out the rest of the investors. Joseph Bean was the master distiller. And to this day, Heaven Hill is still owned by the Shapira family. So it is, it is, I think it's still the, it's the only one that is truly family owned and independent. And it's huge. It's like they've got the second largest stocks of bourbon in America. They're absolutely massive. So Joseph L. Beam was the, the master distiller and um, up to Craig Beam, who was master distiller but i'm not too sure whether he still is or not um it was the, the master distillers were all part of the beam family including parker beam who um, i covered on the parker's heritage collection so in november of 1996 i think it was november the 4th um probably I'm hoping it's not the fifth which is probably quite bad timing there was a fire in one of their aging warehouses and it was a doozy and it pretty much obliterated the entire distillery. 90,000 barrels were lost. Um, and obviously you can imagine this is high alcoholic content. That plus fire equals a bit of a mess. And we're talking barrels being blown up into the sky and everything like that. And it, it really brought them to the knees. They had some remaining stocks. Fortunately, they actually were able to get some support from Brown Foreman and the Jim Beam Distillery who were able to um, do some distillation on their behalf. And it was, I think, Brown Foreman up to about 2010 were um, making Rittenhouse right for Heaven Hill. Um, in 1999, they actually bought the Bernheim Distillery, which is in Louisville. And here's a smaller map to show you where that is in relation to Bardston. Um, they bought that distillery off Diageo. Um, so that's where they are distilling and they still have their headquarters in Barston. So Heaven Hill, loads of, loads of brands, quite a few which I covered off. Thanks to um, SKU's recent eats, there's a list of all the brands that they've got under the Heaven Hill banner. Um, 1492 bourbon, which I've not reviewed, but I've, I've come across. I'm just trying to pick out ones that you, people may well have come across. Elijah Craig we've done, Evan Williams we've done. Fighting Cock, unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of. Somebody did offer it, but I'd already got everything just because it's fighting cock, it sounds rude. Um, Heaven Hill, obviously. Henry McKenna, uh, Larceny, which I didn't manage to get hold of. Uh, the Old Fitzgerald, which was fantastic. Parker's Heritage. Um, but, 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 but they do the Rittenhouse ride. They did the Georgia Moon um, and the Mallow Corn. They do those corn whiskies. Um, quite loads of brands, a lot of kind of obscure ones that you probably won't find in the UK, but tons of stuff. And they do a lot of bottlings or a lot of distilling for other brands as well. So this particular one, it's a four year old um, and it's 75% corn, 13% rye and 12% barley. So we are looking at real entry level, cheap bog standard bourbon. Could be awful, could be pretty good. I've got my hopes up because it's Heaven Hill and because it's this is their flagship brand. This has got their name on it. 40% as well. It's light on the nose. There's not really a great deal to it, to be perfectly honest. Not thin. There's just, there's a light touch. There's a slight sweetness to it. There's a slight kind of just a bit of toffee and a bit of maltiness to it as well. Not massively complex, but not spirity, not harsh. Everything's there on the front. It front loads you with flavor, but it's not a lot of flavor. Slightly juicy as well. It's smooth, it's light, it's easy drinking. There's a bit of toffee in there. There's a little bit of a kick at the back of the throat, but nothing particularly major. It is slightly spirity, but not not overpoweringly so, to be honest. It's, it does exactly what you would expect for $10. And to be honest, it's as good stroke, as indifferent as the ancient age was, as the early times was, which for that price point, what do you expect? It's not gonna blow your socks off. It would service perfectly well in a cocktail, but to be honest, drinking it neat, it's not that bad to be perfectly honest. 
I wouldn't consistently drink it neat, but I wouldn't turn it down if I was offered it. If somebody said, I've got some Heaven Hill, do you want some? Yeah, I would actually, and I'd, I'd drink it neat and I wouldn't have a problem with it. And it would be fine putting it in, in a cocktail with a mixer, something like that. What I found with American whiskies, with some exceptions, no names mentioned, Imperial, Parker Hayes, is that the cheaper end of bourbon isn't actually that bad. Cheap scotch, bad cheap scotch, there's quite a bit of it. There is, there is good cheap scotch, but there is a lot more, there's a higher percentage of bad cheap scotch whiskey than I found of, ba of bad cheap US whiskey stroke bourbon. Cheap American whiskies, and particularly bourbons, they're not brilliant, you wouldn't expect them to be, but they're not offensive. They're not harsh. Some of them have smelled quite harsh on the nose, but then just not had it on the palate. But they're perfectly serviceable. They're smooth, they're easy drinking. They've got some flavor. It's not deep, it's not complex, but it's drinkable. Whereas there is a, a few cheap scotches where it's like, it can be really harsh on the palate or really artificial. I don't know whether it's the caramel that's added, whereas obviously you can't do that with bourbon. You can't add um, coloring to bourbon. So you can't dick about with E150 or anything like that. And maybe that's the element. Maybe that's the factor that they're not adding any coloring to it. And the amount of coloring that some of these companies are adding into scotch and other whiskies is actually impacting the flavor because none of them have had this artificial character that I associate with bad, cheap scotch. I'll be honest, I'm gonna miss American whiskies. It's not that like I'm not going to ever drink them again. I'm just going to miss them for the next six months because I've got scotch and world whiskey and everything like that. But it's been great doing all these American whiskies. I, I, I still love US whiskey. It's not put me off any of them. I've come across some absolute stunners that when I'm next out in America, I'll be trying to get hold of or the next few times, if I just bring one bottle back with me, there are a number of bottles that I'm going to be bringing back. Um, and I've not lost my love for it. Um, I, I think I still prefer American whiskey, to be honest, although I've got a lot of Scotch to get through. Um, and, you know, Japanese and Irish and Canadian and everything like that. But it's been fun. And there are a lot more Americans out there, American whiskies. I know there's a lot of Americans out there, but there's a lot more American whiskies out there that I have yet to try. And were I to carry on, maybe not a dram a day, because it has been quite hard work and it still is. But there is enough out there for me to try and keep exploring and keep sharing samples with people on the interwebs and um, just trying to find samples and everything like that. Um, because, yeah, my heart is, is with American whiskies, I think. It might change over the next six months, but um, it's been fun. So, yes, that's America done. God bless you guys. And um, I'm going to do a quick rinse out and then I'm going to go back to Scotch. So I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.